Hi investors, welcome to SOIC. So in today's video, we'll be talking about how to make money in stocks in the Indian context. So how to make money in stocks is one of the best investing books that is written by Mr. William O'Neill. And Mr. William O'Neill was uh, one of the founders of uh, William O'Neill broking firms and also he used to run a newspaper by the name of IBD that is in in Investor Business Daily. So he wrote this book and he coined the term of Canslim and Canslim has caught on very very famously with a lot of investors. So this book in the Indian context will help you to find multiple such case studies and it will, it will help you to identify such winners in the future as well. So we'll be taking the book and we'll be applying it in the Indian case studies. If you're excited for the video, just drop a hell yes in the comments and also just smash the like button. So let's start with three key learnings that we have taken from the book and applied in the Indian context. So the first key learning which starts is known as the Canslim framework or what is a Canslim framework. So Canslim is a term which he coined in the book which stands for C stands for current quarterly earnings growth that is the current quarterly earnings growth of the company should be accelerating and the sales per share should also be accelerating. A stands for annual earnings increase look for big growth in earnings. N stands for newer companies, newer products, newer managements and new high offs properly formed chart basis. S stands for supply and demand, big volume demand at key points. L stands for leader or laggard, which stock is yours. I stands for institutional sponsorship and M stands for market direction, that how you can determine the market direction. So Canslim is one of the approaches which can help you to identify multiple such winners in the market. But the key question arises that how can we apply it in the Indian context? So let's start with C that is current quarterly growth which should be accelerating and the sales growth should also be accelerating. So in the book he has talked about one of the most famous quotes is that there is a relationship between booming profits and booming stock prices. So what do you have to remember that if a business is doing well or if a stock price is doing well then the earnings or the profit after tax growth of that company will be really booming. So current quarterly growth rates, he is talking about that the company should really have minimum 25 to 50 percent of current quarterly growth rates. And apart from that, also in the book he talks that three out of four businesses which have done really well since 1880s, they had more than 70 percent advance in their earnings growth in the recent quarter. And the best companies can show earnings growth of literally 100 to 500 percent. So best of the companies can literally show 100 to 500% growth in the earnings. So how do we identify current quarterly earnings and what does he mean by current quarterly earnings? Now in a year there are four quarters, right? So uh, the first quarter is April, May, June. Second quarter starts from July, August, September. Third quarter is from October, November, December. And quarter four is from January, February and March. So when he's talking about current quarterly earnings growth, then he's really asking us to identify the growth of uh, quarterly profit after tax and quarterly sales uh, growth as compared to the previous year. Like recently in India, we finished quarter 4 FI23 results. So he's asking us to compare the results of quarter 4 FI22 with quarter 4 FI23. That is what he simply means. And he has given three case studies in the book. So some of the case studies include, so he said ki, uh, like if you look at the case of Dell, so Dell's uh, earning per share surged 74% and 108% in two quarters prior to its price increase from November 1996. He also posted the case study of Cisco. Cisco posted earnings gains of 150% and 155% in two quarters ending October 1990. Prior to its giant run up over the next three years. I think Cisco stock went up by 30 to 40x in that period. American Online's case studies. So uh, in America online uh, earnings were up 900% and 283% before its six month burst from October 1998. So this is what it simply means. But how to identify such companies in India and how to look at Indian case studies. Now here let me show you a stock chart. So this stock chart belongs to a company by the name of SRF. And if you look at the stock chart then you will see that there is a phase 1 and then there is a phase 2. 
so phase one really um, so phase one really tells us about the markup phase of the company when the stock price was doing really really well i think the stock went anywhere between from uh, like six seven hundred rupees all the way till almost 2800 to 3000 rupees within a span of two to three years then today we are in a consolidation phase but can you identify why this consolidation phase is happening so let's look at what happened in the phase one of the company so in the phase one of the company what was happening is that in phase one of the company the quarterly sales and earnings growth were really exploding so quarter four fi 21 showed an uh, earnings growth of 104 percent and sales growth of nearly 40 percent quarter one of fi 22 uh, like were well, like showed an uh, earnings growth of 123 percent and sales growth of 75 percent quarter two was 21 percent earnings growth and sales growth of 35 percent quarter four of fi 22 was 59 percent profit after tax growth and nearly 36 percent sales growth and quarter one fi 23 uh, like had shown an earnings growth of 54 percent and almost sales growth of 44 percent so this was the phase one of the journey where you can see the stock did really well because stock is nothing but a piece of a business if business reports such absurd growth in profits then the stock price will also do well because if you look at it uh, from this terms that the Indian GDP grows at six to seven percentage but if a company is growing its bottom line of profit after tax at a rate of 40 to 50 percent then that company will find buyers so this is the meaning of C that current quarterly sales growth and earnings growth should be somewhere between 25 to 50 percent and you know what we can create screens to filter such companies for ourselves so that is also what i'll teach you uh, after the end of c so second thing now let's look at the phase two so packaging business of srf has blown up so there is a supply side uh, expansion which has happened massively and there's a cyclical downturn through which the company is going right now if you look at sales growth in quarter 3 FI 23, the sales growth fell to barely 4% and earnings growth fell to 1%. And quarter 4 FI 23, the sales growth fell to 6% and the earnings degrew by 7%. And if you look at the stagnant phase of SRF stock price, so since uh, the middle of 2022 till 2023, like we are currently uh, like in the middle of the calendar year 2023, the stock has been stagnant in last one year. It is in a sideways consolidation. Simple reason because stock prices are nothing but slaves to earnings growth. And how to find such rapid earnings growth? So let me give you a screener which will help you to identify such companies which are just at the cusp of that earnings growth. So how to find companies which are showing 25 to 50% earnings growth in their recent quarterly results? So simply come to screener and just click on screens. And after clicking on screens and coming to screener, just simply do this one thing that go down and look at uh, this quarterly result screen and go to the best of latest quarters, right? Companies which are showing very fast quarterly earnings growth. And apart from that, also one more thing that you can do. So over here, you'll find a lot of companies. Apart from that, one more company you, uh, the thing that you can do is just click on the bull cartel and come to companies over here that uh, year on year quarterly sales growth of more than 15 percent year on year quarterly profit growth of more than 20 percent and and also what you can do so this is something that i keep doing is that market capitalization more than 1000 crores right and i will simply add that i personally like pro companies which have a higher promoter holding so companies should have a minimum promoter holding of more than 45 percent i'll just simply run this query and i'll get close to 264 companies out of this so what type of companies are we getting over here so uh, over here if you see we get a cg power over here right so apart from that uh, if you look at the entire list then you will start start finding uh, different types of companies you will find an og1 small finance bank a steel cast will be there right then the vedant fashions is uh, coming over here a safari industries is coming a varun beverages is coming narayana is coming shivalik biometal comes solar industry comes apar industry comes titan also comes in the screen right then apart from that you will see an r systems a gujarat ferro chem Right. Even uh, other companies like Rainbow Children Hospital, like uh, Styram Industries, Ma Man Infra, and a lot of such companies, Shanti Gears, Bajaj Finance, Triveni Turbine. So all this list can be seen through using this simple screen that I've shared with you is that year on year quarterly sales growth of more than 15 percent year on year quarterly profit growth of more than 20 percent and market capitalization of more than 1000 crores and promoter holding of more than 45 percent we can even make this more interesting by adding one simple thing is that market capitalization of more than 1000 crores but market capitalization of less than 10,000 crores to find those companies which are right at the cusp of growth and which have smaller sizes
right so this is also one more way to do it and if you're more valuation conscious then even though in the book it isn't written that you should go according to the valuations but if you are by chance more valuation conscious then you can simply put a screen that price to earnings of these companies should be less than 30 times let's take it for an example and you will be left with 95 such companies right and you can keep scrolling through the screens and you can keep playing across like uh, through the screens and you can get multiple companies which are showing very very strong earnings growth so i taught you three or four ways to find such companies you will see an alu alia contractors will come over here now this company has shown almost a 70 percent patch growth and roe is close to 17 percent right a sri digvijay cement is coming a power mech is coming over there right even a uh, company like agi green pack sangvi movers transpect all these companies you will start seeing will be uh, you you will start finding them over uh, in in such lists so this is one of the ways to find companies with accelerating quarterly pad growth right so this is the first way that we have found companies with current quarterly earnings and sales growth which are on an increasing trajectory now one more thing that he teaches us in the book about the current quarterly earnings growth and the sales growth is that you should always x out one offs so what are one one offs so one offs could be some extraordinary income that the company has earned because of sale of any land some extraordinary income that the company has earned which is only due to uh, which will only be due in this quarter and won't repeat in the next quarters or it could also be some one extraordinary income that the company has gotten by terminating one of the contracts so you have to be careful that the earnings growth and the sales growth that you're seeing is purely from the business and not from any one of activities so i'll give you two indian examples over here so first if you look at the example of arthi industries so arthi industries got its contract terminated which was for a long term contract uh, with uh, one of the uh, like uh, mncs in germany so that german mnc gave arthi industries uh, a termination fee income I think the termination fee income amount was anywhere between 600 to 900 crores and that one of termination income started reflecting uh, st started reflecting in the quarterly growth of Arthi Industries but as a diligent investor you should actually x out that termination termination income to actually see that what is the core business growth of this company secondly if you look at the example of sula so sula earns nearly 40 to 45 crores from vips vips is wine incentive promotion subsidy so uh, sula actually passes on uh, like the vips to the farmers as well as a part of the value chain but nearly 40 to 45 crores gets added to sula's ebitda due to this subsidy which is given by the maharashtra government because the maharashtra government wanted to promote uh, the uh, basically production of wine in maharashtra but now this scheme has been withdrawn in December 2022. So as a diligent investor, so as an investor who pays careful focus on the numbers, you have to see that in FY24, if this scheme or if this subsidy doesn't continue, then what will be the impact on the earnings of this company? So this is also a part of one-off, if the one-off goes away. So this is what he taught us in current quarterly sales growth and earnings growth of the companies. Now coming to A, that is A of the cancelling. A stands for big increase in the annual earnings of the companies. So what does A stand for? So A simply stands for annual earnings increase, look for big growth. So currently we have just concluded financial year 23. So annual earnings increase means that financial year 23 is showing a higher pad growth as compared to financial year 22 and financial year 22 is showing higher pad growth as compared to financial year 21. So this is the simple meaning of FI21, FI22, FI23 and we are looking at yearly increases in earnings. So what does it teach us about in the book? So he simply says that the annual rate of earnings growth for companies should that you uh, pick to study should be 25 to 50% or even 100% or more. The studies show that all the greatest uh, like stocks of the past 50 years had a return on equity of at least 17%. So they were at least making 17% on their shareholders equity. And the really superior growth situations will support 25 to 50% return on equities. Growth stocks over the last three years will show degree of sustainability and stability in earnings growth. And this is what you have to look out, look out for. So after studying the data of most successful stocks since 1880s, the most relevant metric that was found was a rate of change in earnings growth and also the increasing or decreasing of the earnings growth impacted the stock prices substantially and not just P-E ratios. So basically there is a, uh, almost a perfect correlation or a perfect uh, correlation between the rate of change in earnings growth of a company and the eventual stock price performance. 
So here I'll show you multiple Indian examples and we'll try to find companies which are showing very good growth in their earnings and we'll try to make screens as well at how can we identify such companies. Now how to find companies which are showing big annual increase in earnings. So simply come to screener and just go to screens and simply what you can do is that you can come over here and you can just simply go again to the quarterly screens go to the bull cartel screen and just simply uh, like and may just what you can add because we also are looking for consistency so simply what you can add is that the company should be basically showing a, like a three year patch growth like so if you what you can do is that you can simply add profit growth over last three years should be more than 20 percent right and also what you can do to make it even more fun is that you can simply add market capitalization of the company should be more than 1000 and uh, like we, because we are trying to find companies which are small in size so you can do market capitalization more than 1000 and also you can take market capitalization less than 20,000 or 10,000 as per your own comfort of market caps and the moment you run it then again you will find companies which are showing bad growth of more than 20% in last three years now again you have to do the forensic checks independently so that is something that we will do you can keep seeing what type of companies keep coming up over here right so we can also do this manually as well so manually if you want to do it so let's take an example so let me open a company by the name by the name of uh, let's say varun beverages and just manually if you look at the last three year patch growth of the company is close to 49 percent and uh, this uh, like quarter as well the company has grown its sales at a rate of 37 percent and the earnings have grown at almost 60 to 70 percent then you can simply look at other manual examples like let's look at this example just look at the last three years patch growth 33 percent right let's just look at the profit after tax growing and this quarter as well the company's pat has grown from 120 crores to 190 crores similarly you can so look at further more examples let's take a look at this example right so just look at the last three year pad growth of the company is close to 44 percent and this year pad growth of the company like 28 crores is what the company reported pad in quarter four versus 10 crores in quarter four of fi 22 so again you can see that the earnings have jumped by almost 180 percent right so this is also one of the ways to do it finally i'll teach you one more way so again uh, just uh, look at the manual screening charts and uh, let me just open a couple of more companies so let, let's open the, this company and let's look at the earnings growth of the company right just look at the sales sales might be growing at 29 percent pat has grown from nearly 69 crores to 173 crores and last three year pat growth is close to 67 percent cagr right so again we looked at current quarterly accelerating earnings growth we looked at annual earnings growth and we looked at multiple such examples so even if you're screening companies manually this is one of the ways to do it is that you look at the last three year pad growth of the company over here 33 percent and this year's quarterly growth so this year a company has reported quarter four fi 23 23 crores of pat which used to be 13 crore so now what you do not have to get fooled by is that there will be a lot of cyclicals will also come so looking at last three year of pad growth and last three years of uh, return on equity or last year of return on equity will help you to uh, basically de-risk yourself from cyclicals so i'll show you examples of cyclicals and if you look at the example of heg right so between this point uh, the prices of graphite electrodes they just went one way like they just went really up and uh, if you just look at this so the company's pat went from minus 44 crores to 3000 crores in two years so always ask yourself if the earnings have grown so exponentially are the margins sustainable over a long period of time or are they volatile like a roller coaster and if you look at this company over a very long period of time the margins have been very very volatile so this is one way to save yourself from cyclicals similar thing happened in a company by the name of rain industries and if you just look at the long term example then you will again find that the company has a cyclicality in its margins right if you look at this so from 20 percent margins have fallen to 15 percent and if you just look at the crop like pat again you will find there is an element of cyclicality in the company same thing lies with some of the pharma stocks as well just look at the rate of change in the stocks rate of change in the annual earnings growth which will help you to identify such companies right just look at this rate of change just look at the volumes which are coming which we learn in uh, the technicals part of this just look at the volumes right so these are smart money or institutions which are entering and not retail investors and just look at the rate of change in earnings growth that the earnings went from 95 crores to almost 956 crores 
right such things are identifiable if you are if you have stringent screening process and if you are using such a framework that is in place and also a selling framework will also help you to identify when to sell such businesses at the right time so this is with annual big jump in earnings growth of more than 25 to 50% and this is how we can identify them just before going forward if you really want to solve the three biggest w's of investing what are the three biggest w's of investing that is when to buy when to sell and when to pyramid in the soic membership we have a detailed 8 to 10 hour course which will make your job as a retail investor of when to sell extremely smooth because it will give you an objective system that how you can exit overly valued stocks and how you can simply automate your exits that is what the purpose of soic membership is that to make you a complete investor and to take the tension away from you of selling or not second one of the key problems for retail investors is that we do not know how to value a company so that problem also we address in the soic membership where we have taught you a 6 hour detailed course which will help you to find the intrinsic value of a stock and multiple methods to find the intrinsic value of a stock third thing that we have taught you that how to do accounting or how to uh, analyze the accounts of a business even for a non-finance person in a simple language so this thing that we, we have taught you in the l2 of soic membership which will teach you that how the language of the business that is accounting works and we keep doing multiple webinars even when you will be watching this video there is a webinar which is happening on ratios which is a part of soic membership and all the pre previous and the future webinars are part of soic membership and finally if you want to learn how to screen stocks using multiple methods then that is also part of soic membership where we will teach you that what are the multiple ways to screen good solid stock ideas so again all these things are part of one soic membership and if you want to register for the soic membership the link is there in the description below and you can use the coupon code soic bonus 10 so again all these four questions for a retail investor will be solved in the soic membership now going forward with the analysis of how to make money in stocks now coming to the n part that is n stands for new products new managements new highs of the properly formed chart basis what it means that we are looking not only looking for companies which have uh, accelerating quarterly growth or accelerating annual growth but these companies are doing something exciting that these companies are showing us very strong growth rates so how to find such companies which are introducing newer products new and the managements are new all the companies are forming newer highs of properly formed basis so chart basis i'll teach you uh, in the technical analysis bit of the video but this is what he means that after world war ii uh, the new Tupperware division helped push the company's stock from $50 uh, to almost $50 from $16. McDonald's with its low price fast food franchising snowballed in 1966 uh, to 1971 to create almost 1100 profits for its stockholders. Apple and the new iPod music player created a sensation that carried the company's stock up by 1580% from a classic cup and handle base pattern that was easy to spot on February 27, 2004 if you use charts. So simply why is the company growing or what traits the company is showing? We are looking for market leaders, we are looking for companies which are, which are introducing newer products, we are looking for companies which are going into newer geographies, we are looking for companies which are letting go of debt on their balance sheets. Again we are looking for the companies which are entering into newer product categories where the margins will be higher. This is the type of fundamental framework is also covered in can slim approach. I will show you 4 to 5 more examples. So in Indian context if you look at the example of Astral, so Astral is a, a like a historical example and it has been a thousand bagger post the development of CPVC pipes. So this was the first company to introduce CPVC pipes and till then only PVC pipes were being used in India. Naveen Florin, a very recent example that the company announced a long term contract in, 20, uh, in late 2019. And since then, the company's stock price has almost been a, a 6 to 7 bagger since then. Again, a new contract, a new product. So you need to keep your eyes on the BSE announcements. Again, another example. So this is with the example of Prickall. 
so uh, usage of instrument clusters and dis has been increasing in the modern day vehicles as you can see in this video as well that earlier we used to have sp uh, basically speedometers which which were uh, very very analog in nature but now everything is basically turning into digital due to which the content per vehicle has been increasing so this is also an example of newer product newer higher realizations and also how the company has uh, been catering to the opportunity also finally if you look at one more example newer management so rhi magnesita used to be known as orient refractories and RHI Magnesita is a world market leader in refractories and they acquired Orient refractories and they uh, like merged all the subsidiaries and it's a world market leader which is also backwards integrated into its own magnesia mines. So whenever an MNC is coming or whenever a new management is coming in place, we should definitely track businesses because newer management also means that a newer DNA is coming into the business and if they introduce new products or if they introduce something new, then the company could really turn around like also what happened in the case of Sumitomo chemicals this used to be known as excel crop care and one sumitomo which is the mnc which is one of the largest japanese innovators came and acquired excel crop care ever since then the stock has done really well in the last four years so this is a, this, this is an example that whenever we are analyzing businesses we should always look at their investor presentations we should always read their conference calls we should always look at the bse announcements because doing all these things together along with the current quarterly uh, earnings growth and annual earnings growth increases will give us a chance that we will be able to answer that why the earnings of these companies are increasing a lot so this is the meaning of n that is newer products newer managements or newer geographies or the companies doing something really interesting also if you look at uh, other aspects of earnings growth earnings growth come from growth in end user industries like what happened with it industry in 2020 to 2022 everyone wanted to go digital client mining taking away market share geographical expansion new product introduction industry growth new brand introduction expanding distribution companies acquiring other companies and companies doing a lot of capex so what is with base formation so base formation i'll come to supply and demand and supply and demand is a s of can slim that is we have covered can and now we are coming to slim that is s stands for supply and demand so the basic laws of economics is for the price to move up the demand has to be more than price uh, the demand has to be more than the supply so the same uh, basically uh, norm stands in stock markets as well uh, if the supply is more than demand then the price will fall but if the demand is more than price then again the stock will start going up so how do identify such charts or how do identify such opportunities now let me show you an example of a company which is into shunt resistors manufacturing just look at the 30 uh, weekly exponential moving average this i have also taught you in the later part of the video just look at the 30 weekly exponential moving average and just look at the fact that it has started shaping up and just look at the volume bars below this is again smart money or high net worth uh, individual money or uh, smart institutional institutional money which is entering the stock and such stocks always will get screened if you really learn the ways to screen businesses another such examples if you look at forming flat bases and then breaking out that the stock goes into a flat formation they form cup and handle pattern cup patterns which i have taught you in the video itself but here is an example where you can see that again if you just simply draw these again horizontal lines and you can see how the base formation is happening then the stock again goes upwards uh, on an upward journey with very high volume volumes like after every flat base formation there are very high volumes which are accompanied in the stock in the stock price again again in one more example again the formation of something like a cup pattern and if you again simply see that once the base is formed the stock goes up with very very high volumes so this is a simple thing that he has taught us in the book and supply and demand becomes very very important and this i've taught you much more in detail in the third key learning that what all he has taught us about technical analysis so this stands for s that the demand should be much more than supply of the stocks and it will also always be captured by bullish price action along with bullish volume action which we have talked about in the third part of this video now come Coming to the L. L is whether your stock is a leader or a laggard. Whether if you're looking at a leading industry, so whether your stock is the leading business uh, over there 
in terms of price and in terms of business fundamentals or whether it's a laggard you might have seen that sometimes in a sector when the sector is doing really well there will be leaders which will emerge and there will be laggards which will emerge so we as investors have to stick with leaders and how to identify such leaders he has given us the idea of relative strength so what is relative strength so relative strength line which i'll teach you is something which we have to use with all the businesses that are there in our portfolios according to the book that relative strength line will help you to identify those companies which are much stronger than the average market uh, average company in the markets and what is the relative strength line uh, scores that he has taught us so if the relative strength line of a company is 70 so that means that the company is outperforming 70 percent of the remaining businesses in the market but the best of the winners according to his studies in the book comes from companies which have a relative strength line of minimum 80 or minimum 90s and how to identify this that also i'll teach you right away so how to find relative strength line and how to look for relative strength so over here i've opened a website by the name of marketsmith india and uh, again uh, this is one of the website which includes all the key learnings of mr william o'neill and what i'll do simply over here so let's take any sector which is doing very well right now so let's take an example of uh, companies which are lending to msme and smes that is banks so first i'll open a bank by the name of city union bank over here and we'll check the relative strength line of city union bank and uh, the moment it opens you will find how the relative strength line looks like on a weekly chart so over here if you look at this blue uh, line so this is known as the relative strength line just over here i'll just mark it out for you so this blue line is known as relative strength line right and currently relative strength for re re like relative strength rating for city union bank is barely 12 that it is only outperforming 12 percent of the listed stocks in the universe so basically rs rating is very low for city union bank and in the book he talks about that best of the stocks have 80 to 90 rs rating let's look at another bank that is au small finance bank and let's look at the rs rating for au small finance bank rs rating for uh, au small finance bank is 69 right now if you can check over here so basically rs rating of au small finance bank is better than city union bank but still not there in 80s or 90s let's take an example of another small finance bank that is uh, if you look at ujjivan small finance bank over here in ujjivan's case the rs rating is at 88 which is also better than au small finance bank let's look at one more small finance bank let's look at the example of equita small finance bank so over here rs rating is 88 right now and finally let's look at one more business that is federal bank in federal bank's case the relative strength rating is close to 49 right now so we can say that both ujjiva and equitas are showing more uh, relative strength rating than au small finance bank au shows more relative strength rating than federal bank and federal bank is showing more rs rating than your uh, city union bank and finally how to find stocks which have best rs rating in the universe just simply come to research tool idealist and uh, you can go to growth 50 uh, so again a lot of these tools are free to use some of them might be paid we do not have any collaborations with them so i'll just give a standard disclaimer that we do not have any collaborations with marketsmith india screener so i'll just use growth 50 over here and the moment i click on growth 50 you'll find stocks which have the best rs rating right so over here you'll find a list of 50 stocks which will have the best relative strength rating but again you have to be careful is that you are uh, you that, that some of these companies might be cyclical so then again you have to apply your own fundamental framework but i'm just teaching you what we have learned in the book and how you can sort of filter stocks and have your own valuation comfort if it sort of makes sense to you so this is with the rs rating so this is with uh, finally that if your stock is a leader or a laggard and uh, in the book he mentions that the laggards in the portfolio which have a rs rating of 40 50 or 30 should ideally be trimmed and the leaders in the portfolio with 80 or 90 rs rating are the ones which can keep winning if there is further juice in their earnings momentum so this is with almost cans uh, like uh, we have done c a n s n l now coming to i n m of canslim so i of canslim stands for institutional support whether the company that you're looking at if institutions are increasing their stake over there or not so why because one of the reasons is if it's a fresh institutional entry then it means that institutions generally invest for the longer term that the institution will probably keep buying the stock over a period of time and how do i identify such things now let's again go to screener and basically simplify this for once and for all let's come to screens and simply let's go to a screen by the name of increasing fii buying right we can just simply look at this screen fii buying and we can get a lot of stocks where the fii holding is increasing 
So let me open one stock over here that is by the name of Ion Exchange and we can simply just look at the institutional ownership or FII or DII ownership. So over here we will see that the institution ownership uh, like in last 2-3 quarters has increased right from 10% to 11.58% and public share holding has fallen. Another such example that we can go and check uh, like we can actually do this for uh, multiple companies. So let's uh, go and check institutional ownership over here and uh, let's look at the institutional uh, ownership. So from 15% so again uh, like I think company got listed somewhere close to this. So do you, you can just check the combined uh, like DII and FII holding used to be 30 uh, like the used to be 31% in June 2022. But now the combined FII and DII holding has gone to almost 34%. So again increasing signs of institutional ownership. Another example that we can take a look at where uh, maybe the institutional ownership has uh, fallen and where maybe it, it might start increasing again. So let's uh, take an example of this company and let's look at the institutional uh, ownership over here. So FII holding has fallen in last four quarters, last six quarters the FII holding has fallen even though DII holding might have increased but if the public share holding is increasing then typically that's one of the dumping grounds for institutions. So this is also something that we have to look out for. So institutional ownership or institutional favorites are those stocks where both FII, DII holding is on an increasing trajectory and that again gives you an idea that yes the stock might do well in the future because it's institutional backing to the stock. So always uh, combined with price and volume action combined with high volumes always look at the share holding patterns of the company if the FII and DII holding of the particular company is increasing or not because this will give you a sign that whether the smart money is entering the stock or currently the smart money is exiting the stock. Another such example I'll give you now this stock has done really well in last three years. One of the reasons is because FII holding has increased. Just simply look at this. FII holding has gone from 13.97% to almost 27.37%. So combined FII and DII holding is close to 45 to 46 percentage whereas public share holding has fallen from 21.64 to 15.88. If institutions come into a stock and if FII and DII holding increases over a period of time then there is a high chance that if the business is doing well earnings momentum is there then the stock will keep performing. So this is with the eye of Cancelim. Finally coming to M and M stands for market direction and what is the general market direction because three out of four stocks generally follow the market direction whether the market direction is bullish or the market direction is bearish. So one of the ways in the books that he has taught actually multiple ways he has spoken about. So one of the ways he has taught is looking at the 10 weekly moving average. So 10 weekly moving average is nothing. So first thing that he told that you have to track the broader indices. So in US uh, case it will be S&P 500, Dow Jones, Nasdaq and uh, NYSE composite. Whereas in Indian case it will be the small cap 250 index, the nifty 50 index, the sensex and also the uh, mid cap index. Right, so that is what we can track. So looking at the broader indices, simply you can apply a 10 weekly moving average. How you can do it? So I've actually taught all these things in the second part of this video where we have simplified technicals for you. So you can simply go to indicators and you can simply search for simple moving averages. And the moment you apply a simple moving, uh, basically just give me a moment. And the moment you apply a simple moving averages indicator over here, you can just simply go for simple moving averages. And the moment you apply this, so simple moving averages, right? So you'll get a lot of moving averages over here. So what you can simply do is that you can uh, open them and you can close uh, all of them. So these, these are basically on different time frames. And I've taught all these things to you in the second part of the video as well. So you can just look for the SMA one and in the inputs, you can just put it as 10. Because we are looking on weekly charts, see you can check the time frame is weekly and you can check we are using 10 as the SMA. So you can also do what you can just take the style and you can sort of make it more uh, bolder and now we are ready. So basically 10 weekly moving average is nothing but the calculation of nearly last 50 trading days and the average of the price that, that we have come to right. So this is how a moving average is calculated. It's nothing but a simple moving average. We are not even talking about exponential moving average over here. So in a simple moving average, if you look at the upward direction of the moving average, see you will see that moving averages work very well in a trending market, but they do not work very well in a downtrending market. 
So moving averages or a 10 weekly moving average will give you an idea when the markets are in an uptrend. Like over here you can see as the market bottomed out post COVID and you can see the moving average was in an uptrend. There was sideways trend as well in the, in, the, uh, in the middle. But you can see how according to the Dow theory as well, the market is forming higher highs. What are higher highs? Basically every higher point is higher than the previous higher point. See just look at this higher highs. Just look at this higher highs. Just look at this higher highs. Then when the trend changes, the market starts forming uh, higher lows. Just look at this. Now this high is lower than the previous high. This high is lower than, lower than the previous high. This high is lower than the previous high. So this is how you can get an idea about the broader market trends. You can study the Dow theory as well. You can study about the moving averages as well. And he says in the book that it is possible to time the market. It's not impossible because if you're tracking the leading stocks, if the leading stocks, they start breaking down or if the leading stocks are there on faulty basis, which we learn in the second part of this video, then again, the markets are on a shaky fundamentals. So even uh, like he says that if there are three to four uh, distribution days, that is uh, higher volume sell offs in four to five week horizons, even that can signal a trend of uh, basically index flattening out or going into a downwards trend. Now currently you can see the small caps are doing really well because the uh, Sensex small cap index is at an all time high. So if the index does well and if you have picked your stocks well then your performance will be really really good. This is why studying fundamentals and ends up becoming very very important. But this is what he talks about broader market directions. If you have selected the stocks well and if the market direction isn't in your favor then there is likely your patience will be tested and in the book he uh, basically recommends to sell basically. But again that is up to every basically each and every viewer to decide so this is the cancelling methodology we learned about the all the part like all the aspects of cancelling but one final aspect is left which is the idea of looking at the best performing uh, sectors now coming to the second key learning of the video and this key learning of the video is also one of the most important learnings so this key learning talks about that sectors move together all the factors they do well together I'll repeat because this is very very important that sectors do well together and the factors they move together. So what is the meaning of this? And in the book he gives us two very interesting data points. That majority of the leading stocks are usually in leading industries. Studies show that 37% of a stock's price movement is directly tied to the performance of an industry group the stock is in. Another 12% is due to strength in its overall sector. Therefore, roughly half of a stock's move is driven by strength of the respective group. That nearly 50% of a stock's move is coming due to the fact that the entire sector is doing well. And this again is the idea of tailwinds. So whenever a sector starts growing at a faster pace, then it simply means that the stocks will start doing well in that particular sector. Just within the last 2-3 years, we have seen so many sectors in India doing well. So I'll just name some of those subgroups and there are multiple ways to find these. So over here, I'll just name them. So first cable and wires like Polycap did well, KEI did well, Dynamic Cables did well, Phenolex Cables did well, Apar Industries did well. That is one example. Then defense sector, defense companies did well. Then API companies between 2020 to 2021, uh, like middle, did really well uh, together. Then ERD IT companies and LXC did well, KPIT did well, LTTS did well between 2020 to 2022. Platform companies did well together in 2020 to 2021. CDMO Pharma did well, railways are doing well, music uh, industry did really well. Uh, electronic contract manufacturers has been the leading sector it is doing well CDMO Pharma did well financials have been doing very very well I think that is also one of the themes that again emerged auto ancillaries which are focused on electric vehicles whether they are into shunt resistors whether they are into gear manufacturing whether they are into like even some of the chemical companies which were into electrolyte manufacturing did really well steel tube companies steel tube as in sector did well power sector did well power sector ancillaries did well capital good uh, did well some of the store uh, some of the stocks into iron ore manufacturing one of them is almost a 30x in last three four years did really well one of the stocks has been almost a 20 bagger in iron ore manufacturing all these companies did really well together 
then chemicals did well micro finance has been doing well fluorination within chemicals has been doing well all four companies within fluorination have did really well uh, mining related proxies whether it is an usha martin tega industries ai engineering they did well together uh, shunts and magnets companies did well water related proxies have been doing well together so 60% or more of big winners are part of group moves and this is something that you need to realize is that whenever a sector is doing well together whenever a sector is coming on price volume action screens or whenever a sector a particular subgroup is hitting 52 week highs then you need to investigate that what is different that is happening in this sector today that is where some of the real winners are made if again he uh, like in the book asks us uh, not to look at valuations but again as fundamental investors we always have this bias if valuations are still favorable over there then that is the place where you will find your deepak night rights of 2020 or loris labs of 2020 or lexis of 2020 or your uh, like wagon stocks of 2023 or your uh, like uh, banking stocks of 2023 or your auto ancies of 2022 2023 So this is a simple idea that look for sectors which are rallying together and this again multiple screens and screeners can be built which i have uh, mentioned for you in the description as well so this is also the second key learning at how you can look at companies which are doing well together because factors they always move together even if you look at the us tech companies whether it's a microsoft whether it's an apple whether it's an alphabet or or an amazon they rally together and they fall together because this is a part of broader factor and sectoral moves so liquidity chases the same sector or the same factor together and the sooner you understand it the better you will be at spot uh, at spotting the uh, places of strength in the markets also you will be able to find that some of the sectors they also fall together so that is the opposite point of view if the sectors are falling together and the valuations again become very very cheap so that is again a way for deep value investors to identify those opportunities as well so this is the beauty of looking at markets through sub sectors sectors and where the liquidity is chasing stocks or which sector the liquidity is chasing that is one of the ways that you can capture the huge winners in your portfolio now finally going to the third key learning which will teach you about technical analysis and the technical chart patterns and what technicals he has asked us to look in the book and this will be in a very very beginners language and you will also be able to practice these technicals yourself as well now starting with the third key learning of the book now this key learning of the book is very very important because i'll be talking about a lot of indian case studies like we did in the previous two learnings as well so in this key learning of the book we'll talk about other technical chart patterns the part of technical Technical analysis: What is price volume action? What is cup and handle pattern? And also, also what is a flat base? And finally, we'll be discussing that what are the selling strategies that he has taught us in the book. So, in this key part, you learn about all these things which are linked to technical analysis. And I'll take you from the beginning because I want to make it so so simple that even a beginner can understand. So, when it comes to technical analysis, which is taught in the book, so it's very very simple to learn. So, he talks about price and volume action. So what is the meaning of price and what is the meaning of volume and what happens when both price and volume action come together So think of technical analysis as as if you are roaming around in an auction driven market So if you go in an auction driven market so first thing that you notice is that suppose if you want to drink tea, a cup of tea and there are 20 tea sellers over there on on one tea seller the tea uh, there is a lot of tea drinkers which are standing over there So basically that means that either the tea quality of that tea seller is good or that a lot of people are finding value in the price that the tea seller is providing the tea at and what ends up happening is because there is a lot of social crowd over there so that so you also go there now suppose you go there and you have to bid for the tea so bidding for a cup of tea starts at rupees 4 then it goes to rupees 5 then it goes to rupees 6 then along with the bidding for a cup of tea the volumes also start increasing at rupees 4 there were 100 tea drinkers who were bidding for that cup of tea at rupees 5 there were 150 tea drinkers who were bidding for that cup of tea at rupees 6 there were 200 tea drinkers who were bidding for that cup of tea so probably the taste of the tea is really good and the value that tea seller is providing is really really good so this is why the bidders are willing to increase their volumes or increase their bidding price So this is in a nutshell what price and volume action means. Now if a stock if some informed buyer is finding value in a particular stock then what and then what the buyer will do if particularly it's a smart institution or a group of smart institutions is that they'll bid up the stock. And where will they leave the imprint? The imprint will be left on the volumes. 
So when both price and volume action combine, so this is how things start looking like. Now there is also another tea seller you go to. Now over there that tea seller is offering you a cup of tea at rupees five. But you say I won't take it at rupees five. I'll take it at rupees four. Then he comes to rupees four. Then you're like no no no. I don't even want it at rupees four. I'll take it at rupees three. And then this is another uh, different point of view when it comes to technical analysis. If you think about this tea seller, so it means that even at a lower price, you are not willing to take a cup of tea, or there are many tea drinkers who are not willing to buy that cup of tea. So there are four combinations which can be made between price and volume action. So if the price is going up and the volumes are really really high, then it means that it's a strongly bullish pattern. because it means that the buyers are willing to chase the price with higher volumes i'll show you multiple examples over there then if the price basically is going high but the volumes are low then it means that the trend is weakening that there are not many buyers who've been buying but again the trend is weakening right the trend isn't as strong as the first scenario if the price is falling and the volumes are really high then this is a dangerous sign because this means that the smart money or the institutions are getting out of a particular stock and they are distributing the stock among among the retail shareholders or among the public so this is also one of the reasons why if you look at retail share holding increasing in a particular business so that ends up becoming a red flag because it means that the institutional money is getting out of a particular stock then what is the fourth sign the fourth sign is that if the stock is falling and if even if the volumes are falling then it means over a period of time the fall might stabilize because the whosoever wanted to sell has sold out and at a lower price again there 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 is still no buying interest but even the sellers have sold out of a particular stock so these are the four combinations which arise uh, from the price and volume action so i'll just show you some examples of price and volume action so over here i have opened a tool by the name of trading view and in the book he talks about that you should always use log charts versus arithmetic charts and there is a reason behind this as well so in arithmetic charts what ends up happening is so very very simple to understand you don't need to worry so in arithmetic under charts what ends up happening is that if the price moves from 10 to 20 then it is a 100% move then it, if it moves from 20 to 30 then it's a 50% move but what ends up happening is that the arithmetic chart assumes that the move from 10 to 20 and from 20 to 30 is similar but whereas in terms of percentages the move is very very different whereas in log charts what ends up happening is that all the moves are calculated on the basis of percentage even a one percentage move will be correctly represented uh, represented in a log log chart over a long period of time now just look at this so which uh, time frame of charts we are using so we are using weekly or monthly charts because that is what i suggest for long term or medium term investors to use not daily or intraday charts because that induces a lot of noise but over here if you just click on this uh, like if you just open this so then it will be like this just click on auto and just click on log so your log charts will come and this is also one more learning from the book when it comes to technical analysis now first combination that we learned was high price and higher volumes so now now let's look at this so uh, over here from the, in the chart of usha martin on weekly charts the volume is going high the, so uh, over here if you look at it so this entire chart on the underlying category is known as a volume chart right volume chart that how many buyers and sellers are over there doing transactions so a lot of buyers like and uh, the price is moving up so if the price is moving up and the volumes are high then the volume candles will be green in color so again high high price and high volume so volumes and price both are both of them are working together and smart money institutional money or people with high net worths are entering this particular stock at this point of time in 21st april right so this is at this point of time 21st uh, april uh, 19th april 2021 now if you look at this recently as well so in 2023 right so in 2023 in the uh, beginning of 2023 again very high volumes along with price gain right so price uh, like went from 140 150 rupees to almost like 182 200 rupees right so again a, a combination of uh, from 134 rupees to almost 201 rupee again a combination of high price and high volume so these things they should particularly get filtered for you so stock filtration is something that we teach in soic membership so this stock uh, usually got, like got filtered multiple times because of high price and high volume action 
so this is the first combination that is price going up and the volume is also going up coming to the second combination so just over here that the price is uh, like going down and the volumes are increasing so let me open this particular stock that is known by the name of land pharmaceuticals and uh, just look at this so on a weekly chart can you observe the red the red bars how the red bars are increasing and how the price is falling so these are so this is known as signs of distribution that the smart money is getting out of the stock and they are dumping it literally so this is the sign of distribution so always remember this that if the price is going up and the volumes are going high that those are signs of uh, like markup as well and heavy accumulation but this is a classic sign of distribution because uh, the red volume bars are increasing and also the price falls are increasing so these are two or three signs that you need to remember right so this is with a very very basic understanding of technical charts that we got from the book that is high price high volume is equal to bullishness high price uh, like lower price and higher volumes is equal to bearishness right so there were other two patterns as well so you can check them independently using trade trading view on, on different stocks as well but now i'll come to different stock chart and uh, stock chart patterns so in the book he also talked about there are three ch stock chart patterns which usually uh, keep coming up in different stocks so first stock chart pattern that he talks about is known as a cup and handle pattern second stock chart pattern that he talks about is known as a flat base or a three week tightening or five week tightening pattern and final stock chart pattern that he talks about is known as a cup pattern or a saucer or a saucer breakout pattern so i'll start with the third one first because it's much easier to recognize so first i'll just open a company over here so i'll just open a company by the name of narayana odyale for uh, to make our understanding easier so this is how a cup pattern looks like or a saucer pattern looks like right so this could also be a like a cup and handle pattern as well but if you just look at it uh, over here so this is what a cup pattern looks like so it's literally like a cup right and just remember whenever a cup pattern is made so basically uh, the fall on weekly charts is not more than is not is somewhere between 18 to 15 percent and it's not more than 33 percent the fall from the peak on the weekly charts so something that you have to remember over here so just look at it it's like a cup right and also just it starts basically going up now what is the difference between a cup pattern and a cup and handle pattern just say in the same chart if you look at this so what ends up happening in a cup and handle pattern is that the stock chart goes down right you can just check right so a stock chart initially goes down 8 to 15 percent somewhere between this right and the entire uh, period lasts somewhere between 7 to uh, 65 weeks for the formation of a cup and handle pattern and once it starts recovering again then uh, then it again basically drifts downwards and this is the formation of the handle i'll show you one more stock chart which will make it very very clear for you that how does a cup and handle chart look like looks like so some something like this right something like this so basically this is the cup and this is the handle of the cup right and 8 to 15% fall from the peak right so what ends up happening the psychology is is that the uh, uh, like investors who are weak hands they get shaken out and strong hands keep accumulating the stock and after they've accumulated then the stock chart drifts because there is still no buying over there but as the stock chart drifts even at small volumes right even at small or higher volumes the stock chart will break out and this is usually known to be the buying points for investors as well so this is the cup and handle pattern and this is what the so this is what the psychology behind cup and handle pattern is so not every time a handle will be formed so i'll give you uh, like a couple of more examples so i'll just open a stock chart of uh, varun beverages so you will see not every time a handle will be formed and a stock will all of a sudden break out so just over here so again it's a uh, basically so just over here if you look at it so again it's a cup or a saucer type formation and without the formation of a handle the stock has broken out right so again that is one example over here also another example but again uh, the time frame is uh, less so over here this is one more example then over here there is also uh, like one more example of a cup pattern being formed and it and it is breaking out over here it is it can be said that there is a cup and handle so this forms the cup and this is the handle and this ends up breaking out on high volumes so this is what he taught us is that there is a cup and handle pattern so that a cup type structure is formed so i'll again explain it to you in very very simple language so just over here 
tadar cup type structure is formed and this entire structure formation takes close to uh, somewhere between 7 to 65 weeks on weekly charts right so this is with a uh, cup formation what is the handle formation so handle formation is after the cup formation is formed so the handle formation will form in subsequently of uh, next 1 to 2 weeks and in the handle formation the stock chart will drift for a period of time and then again it will break out once the handle formation is done so i'll show you one more example on how a classic cup and handle pattern looks like so this is again one of the classic examples of how a cup and handle pattern looks like so just over here that a cup formation lasts anywhere between from 7 to 65 weeks that is again from william o'neil so this is how the cup looks like and again this is the handle of the cup and again on just slight increase in volume the stock chart ends up breaking out so you also do this experiment look at multiple charts on a weekly basis look for a cup type formation and after the cup formation comes look at the stock chart the, the stock price drifting aside for a couple of weeks if it drifts aside in a sideways motion or in a slightly downward no, no like motion so it will represent the formation of a handle if it doesn't drift aside then it represents that the stock has uh, broken out only from a cup pattern if it keeps going up so these are the two patterns that he ta taught us so the third pattern that he taught us is known as three week tightening pattern so what is a three week tightening pattern or sometimes that pa like tightening pattern also lasts till uh, five week so basically it simply means that after there is an up move so just on the weekly charts of pb fintech if you just look at this after there is an up move so generally a stock retraces right so generally a stock falls because there is also some profit booking or supply that comes but if the supply doesn't come and the stock go goes in a sideways direction in a very tight price band just over here if you look at uh, pb fintech just a very tight price band it is basically roaming around in on drying volumes just look at this uh, like uh, like volume bars so volumes have literally dried then it is known as a 3 week tightening or sometimes even it lasts till 5 week so this is also one of the unique patterns that he has taught us because it means that there is not much supply that is coming and a lot of strong buyers are still assessing the stock and if the supply isn't coming and the buyers are still there so it is known to be a bullish pattern as per the book so this is known as 3 week tightening or 5 week tightening pattern and 3 week tightening pattern after the stock rallies and it goes in a very tight range for the next few weeks for at least 3 to 5 weeks then it means that another base has been formed and there is no supply that is that, that is coming which is represented by the uh, drying volumes that no seller wants to come and sell the particular stock right now so this is with the chart patterns that he taught us that is 3 week or 5 week tightening patterns so this is with uh, formation of flat bases then he taught us about cup and handle formation and finally he taught us about the cup pattern one interesting thing that he again uh, spoke about in the book is charts with overhead supply and charts which are in blue sky scenarios so charts with overhead supplies so what is the meaning of overhead overhead supply and what is a chart with an overhead supply so i'll just open the stock chart of balaji mines right now so just look at it from a weekly charts so just to make it very very simple for you so what is an overhead supply is that in the in the uh, secondary trend that is in last 2 to 3 years if the stock uh, has uh, like reached a peak like over here the stock reached a peak of almost 5200 rupees almost a peak of 5200 rupees now currently now if the stock has to rise so again someone would have bought at 4200 right someone would have bought at 3400 someone would have bought again at uh, like uh, like 2800 somewhere close to 2800 and uh, over here 3200 so it simply means is that if this stock has to rise then what will end up happening is that people who bought at 5200 and are frustrated right now they will start selling people who bought at 4200 are frustrated right now they will start selling people who bought at 3200 are frustrated right now and they will start selling so this means that there is overhead supply which is there on the stock chart right now that there is an overhead supply so this is the simple meaning of this now let's look at something other uh, something something else where uh, just to give you an educative example which is currently in a blue sky scenario right which seems to be that uh, overhead supply might not be there too much so again if you look at this chart versus the chart of balaji mines so over here you will find that there is not much overhead supply that is visible so the possibility of this stock chart hitting resistance is lower as compared to balaji mines where some real tangible business change has to happen for it to 
again uh, basically rise above with high volumes but that doesn't mean that we'll eliminate that stock chart but that means that in terms of looking at a stock chart with overhead supply or a blue or a blue sky scenario uh, maybe the blue sky scenario charts are much better than overhead supply charts because as soon as the uh, chart with very high overhead supply starts moving then again the supply will start coming so this is also another one of the key learnings from the book when it comes to technical analysis now before i go to exit strategies that he's taught about technical analysis in the book i'll just give you some brief homework over here so now this is the weekly chart of uh, sl pro pack so looking at the volumes and looking at the price do let me know in the comment section that what does it signify on weekly charts then i'll also open like uh, the like the weekly charts of let's say loris labs and just from this point of time right just around this point of time that is from uh, december 2022 till uh, basically january 2023 what does this signify along with the volumes right then i'll open the weekly chart of dixon so looking at the weekly chart of dixon so uh, basically this fall this fall that is from uh, 16 uh, like 23rd june 2023 Uh, till almost 23rd uh, like feb uh, 2023 what does this fall signify right with the volumes so these are just simple three questions that you let me know in the comments and also one final one is that now looking at this uh, chart that is over here that is of jindal stainless so what does this signify along with volumes when the price is rising so this will give you an idea that how a simple price volume action analysis is done now finally coming to the last bit of technical analysis that he taught us in the book so what does the last bit of technical analysis teaches us simply when to exit a stock so what are the reasons for exiting a stock so there are like seven or eight strategies that he taught us so i'll just open a few of them so just first one is over here so first strategy that he simply said is that come to a daily chart right so come to irctc's daily chart so this is to protect you from euphoria simply go to uh, like uh, basically or either you can use exponential moving average or you can use simple moving average so again in the book he hasn't uh, clarified so i'll just use a simple moving average so moving average is nothing but the averages of the last 200 day, uh, 200 days of trading prices so that is what a moving average is so i'll just simply uh, just open a moving average over here so i'll just open a moving average over here and on moving average i'll put the length as 200 right either you can use 150 or 200 so he says that if the difference between the stock chart uh, the stock price chart and the moving average ends up becoming at least close to 70% that is the point of time that the stock has become extremely euphoric or it starts looking like an eiffel tower and at that point of time what is happening is that everyone owns the stock and this is known as a climax stop along with the volumes if you just look at the volumes over it so again everyone wants to buy the stock the stock is there in the news there are news articles being written that how this psu stock uh, turned into so much so much those type of articles are being written and at this point of time if the difference between 200 sma if the difference between 200 simple moving average is and the and the stock price right is more than 70% so then it means that there is a euphoric peak which has been reached and the stock should be sold because it is everywhere there in the newspaper then another example that i give uh, so again this is according to our indian interpretations so let's look at the example of indian energy exchange right so everyone wanted to own indian energy exchange right so just as an uh, basically um, idea over here so just over here so again if you look at the peak was at 316 whereas the sma was at uh, 130 rupees so you can just imagine the difference of more than 100% and just look at the volume so he says to identify a climax stop you also need to identify the volumes that is the volumes are lifetime high and now the stock starts falling back right if the volumes are lifetime high then it means that the dumping or the distribution of the stock has started and if you just simply carry this learning with you in the next bull market whichever you see maybe after 3 years 4 years 2 years uh, when whenever like mid or small caps are becoming like 2 3 baggers within like 6 months so just remember this simple selling criteria is that if the difference between 200 simple moving average 
and the stock price crosses more than 70 percent and if the volume uh, and if the and if the stock chart falls or if the or if the stock price uh, stock price falls with very high volumes then that is a sign that a climax peak or a climax top has been reached right so this is a simple understanding which he gives us in the book about one selling strategy second selling strategy that he gives us in the book is that uh, suppose if you own a very strong uh, stock let's uh, take an example of uh, loris over here so suppose if you own a very strong chart uh, like a very strong stock right so the selling strategy simply is so i'll just uh, take this over here is that you put the moving average to 10 right weekly moving average that is so just over here it's loading right and the moment it breaks weekly moving average like comprehensively that is a selling point that, that is a point to sell the stock over here if you just check this so it took support at the 10 weekly moving average right then over here it broke but it still recovered but when it breaks comprehensively then that is a point of time to sell the stock but over here i'll just add one addition from my side is that instead of 10 weekly moving average if you're using 30 weekly exponential moving average average so basically it gives more relevance to the stock uh, stock price which is more uh, recent in nature if you use 30 weekly exponential moving average on a weekly chart and once it crosses uh, once it basically breaks that the stock price breaks that so then again it is a point of selling because uh, especially in two years the stock almost gave a 10 or 11 x returns so expecting 10 11 x returns from a stock or a business is very irrational in nature because stocks they keep hitting purple patches as we discussed in the relative strength uh, part of the video so this is again coming from the stage analysis video and this is also one of the exit strategies right so this is known as a stage four when distribution or the dumping starts and this is known as a stage three top right another example over here i'll just simply give you that of uh, basically maybe dv's laboratories right just over here just simply if you just check this so the company was uh, there on the 30 weekly exponential moving average since 2017 if you are more convinced about a company's prospect so you can even use 40 weekly exponential moving average and just over here if you just check it comprehensively broke the 40 weekly exponential moving average right just on this one and it has been below that and now it is trying to regain that price point so again this is a stage 4 and this is where distribution starts and if you just couple it uh, with high price volume action then you will see that the price is falling and the volumes are also increasing. So this is a simple way to sort of have an exit strategy in place which uh, Mr. William O'Neill has taught us in the book. So this is with the technical analysis that we learned is that we learned different uh, like char chart patterns we learned what is a uh, like uh, price, and, uh, price and volume action and we also finally learned about the concept of uh, weekly moving averages uh, 200 SMA and when to sell a stock using moving averages if you really want to learn how to put uh, like if you really want to have an objective exit strategy in place so that is something that we teach in SOIC L4 that is level 4 of SOIC membership and in that level 4 of SOIC membership as I explained to you earlier it will make your exit uh, exit so objective that sometimes the exits won't even come for four to five years if you educate yourself on those tools or indicators then you will be able to ex take exit calls very very objectively so link to again the SOIC membership is there in the description below so these are all the technical analysis learnings that we have from the book how to make money in stocks so in conclusion of the video we learned three key things from the book first we learned about the cancelling strategy second we learned about the fact that sectors they move together and subgroups also move together and third thing that we that, that we learned from the video that what are the technical chart patterns and what are the technicals that we have to learn for entry and exit strategies from the book so these were the three key learnings and you also let me know in the comment section which was your favorite key learning and what were your key conclusions after watching this video and make sure that you subscribe to this channel and you share this video video with your friends because uh, like reading western literature and converting it into indian case studies can actually help indian inv investors benefit massively if you want us to keep doing this video of actually looking at western books and converting them into indian case studies do let us know in the comment section as well Thank you so much for joining us. Hope to see you in the next business analysis of SOIC. Jai Hind.